Hey guys, it's Kugel again with another ROM review and this time I've got the Tesla ROM version 3.4 for the OnePlus 3, so stay tuned for that. So guys, the Tesla ROM is here in its latest iteration and it is based on uh, the Nogat 7.1.1. So that is a very, very interesting prospect. Uh, I was waiting for Tesla to release their 7.1 version because until recently, uh, Tesla was on 7.0 version. So that didn't really uh, in invite me into the Tesla ROMs because, well, everyone wants to have the latest and greatest. So having this on 7.1.1 is a very very interesting thing for me so let's get into the about phone page so in the about phone page you can see that it says tesla n so that is the latest one you do have android version 7.1.1 so that is amazing to see because well it is the latest and greatest it does have the security patches of december so that is the latest one and that is an amazing improvement because the last version had a very old one so i do really like that SLN status is permissive so you do have need to understand that so yeah my and model number does not say unknown anymore so that is a very good thing uh, but if you are using something like get uh, assistant for the assistant to work you might have to change that to pixel excel so uh, or pixel yeah, depending on your taste you can do that and it should work almost similarly let's get to the other stuff now in the settings menu you will see that uh, most of the stuff here are basically what you would expect out of any other uh, nogat rom now this is aosp based rom so you are going to get most of the stuff which is AOSP but this does use a bit of repositories from CyanogenMod 14.1 uh, so that is where the 7.1.1 comes. In the SIM card uh, the colors for the SIM is working so that is something which I really appreciate um, just so you guys know. Let's get to the extra stuff now. In the extra settings you do have a few tabs here which you can select. Uh, first of all power menu. Power menu can be customized to whatever you need. You can also have you do have a lot more customization than normal one so uh, power menu uh, animations and all that can be customized here all that it, all of these can be enabled with uh, lockdown airplane mode settings even and the screen recorder on the power menu so you will have a huge power menu and i really i personally do like the uh, bottom uh, scrolling up style of uh, power menu because well, that is just this and also you can completely make it opaque so you can't see anything else in the lock screen you do have bottom lock screen shortcuts and weather so you can enable weather and uh, it will show up in lock screen I'm not entirely sure if c clock is the one responsible for that because i couldn't really get c clock settings anywhere else so yeah it also has lock screen shortcuts which you can customize here status bar in the status bar options you do have clock style where which i have enabled into left uh, a with ampm indicator you can also enable the date and date style so that is amazing to see battery status style you can actually enable battery uh, for expanded whenever it's expanded it will show battery if it is not well, it will not show battery so you can actually have that or also the styles of the battery can be customized default that is the normal nougat style uh, battery also you can customize it to horizontal bar default and uh, text only all of that can be customized here and that is really amazing to see also percentage can be enabled always so it will come away outside of this thing so that is also there and you can enable percentage overlay which will display the percentage inside of the icon so that is the different thing from Zyanogenma how they do it okay in the quick setting tile you do have brightness slider you can enable or disable the quick set, uh, alert slider or brightness slider so that is amazing to see you can just disable that if you don't want that brightness icon can be enabled but it doesn't really show up so that is one thing which I was I'm not a big fan of brightness control by sliding across the status bar advanced data tile layout now layout you can customize rows columns and uh, the columns in landscape also so that is amazing also small quick setting tile can be enabled and i have seven enabled right now so you can see i have seven the thing is uh, in the tile menu you cannot go more than six so that is something else which uh, i'm not a huge fan of i personally use seven tiles per row or uh, per column so that is something which i would have liked in this one also traffic indicators in the traffic indicator settings it is basic settings you do have outgoing and uh, incoming uh, traffic monitor on the status bar also bytes per second bits per second whatever you want to have update interval and auto hide is available with hide arrows also status bar icon now you do have options to change whatever appears in the status bar so that is amazing then the notification 
notification stuff you do have show notification count you can enable disable that that is amazing to see also force no expand notifications uh disable immersive mode messages all that can be customized from here carrier label can also be enabled or disabled if it for lock screen only status bar only and all that so you do have that now it is kind of a dud uh, it will choose one sim card or the other to display uh, right now it is displaying my second sim card not the first one so you will have to make do with that in the navigation settings it does have the navigation bar if you enable navigation bar you do you will get smart bar and fling so that is amazing uh, it does give you more functionality i personally do not use navigation bar so i don't have too much to talk about that in the button settings though you do have a lot of options uh, there is no keyboard cursor control which i would have liked but the hardware uh, hardware keys can be enabled or disabled here so i'm not entirely sure why would, why you would disable this and not enable navigation bar also back button can be customized for single button single press long press and double tap so you do have that for back home and overview screen so all of this is available in here it does have screenshot type enabler so right now i have enabled drag selection and it also has option of uh, full screenshot so whatever you like not entirely sure why that is in the multitasking session because uh, it doesn't really give you multitasking options uh, i'm not entirely sure but it is available in that one so yeah now if you click this it will still say under construction as it w did in the previous versions also so i'm not entirely sure when this will be com completed probably never because it is an ever increasingly uh, developing process so yeah that is still under construction everything else is basically what you would expect out of a new get bomb so you do have night light so that is amazing ambient display is available ambient notification inversion is there if you have a black background and this does support substratum and that is a huge thing i don't know if they uh say that in the forum but this does have full oms support i, I am using a custom uh, status bar icon here so it does and it doesn't uh, it is not the legacy support it is a full substratum new version support so that is amazing i really like that status bar suggestions can be disabled size bar conditions uh, all of that can be disabled and there is the density option for font sizes and display sizes so that is furthermore amazing now it does have a light setting which is uh, different from display setting so you do have brightness battery light and it does have have four uh, stages of battery it does have battery low charging charging more than 90 percent and 100 percent charge it so that is something which i really appreciate the notifications uh, light it doesn't have automatic selection for notification but it does do a good job of selecting the light for the notification so not entirely sure why that is missing though everything else is basically what you would expect out of any other rom let's uh, talk about battery life the battery life for me now you can see my cycle here is a bit interrupted because today morning uh i didn't have any battery life in my phone because i forgot to charge it and i had to charge it while doing a lot of things so uh it is a very different type of curve so this battery life what you see here is i mean not this one but this downward curve that is mainly uh, from about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning to about um, about evening 5 to 5.30. So almost 5 o'clock. I just charge it from 5 o'clock to about right now. So that is 100%. Dash charging does work. So you don't need to do that. GeoSIM does work. So someone did ask me if I need to mention if Geo is working. So GeoSIM is working. As you can see, Geo 4G is working. So LTE not not a problem one plus dose is available where you have more settings for the ambient display so you can pick up hand wave and pocket mode is available which is amazing screen of gestures is available and it does have more options than the stock or cm based version so you can enable all of these and uh, custom app even so that is amazing and we really appreciate that notification slider is again working so i really like notification slider i do use that normally and uh, you do need to swap the buttons if you are used to the one plus way of using the buttons hardware buttons because this is back and this is overview right now but as you flash it this is overview and this is black uh, this is back so yeah you need you may need to swap the buttons if you need to use that as the normal version now it does have app ops which is basically a permission management stuff so you can enable disable all of these permissions if you don't want certain applications to uh pry on you or spy on you uh but do keep in mind that this may function affect the functionality of the application in question because not all applications uh, do run good with the uh the app ops so yeah 
in the developer option it doesn't have supersu or super user so you will have to flash supersu packages to get this working uh, i had to flash that no problems i didn't have any issues with that that is how i re restored everything here so titanium backup and all of that is from that i guess that is it in the uh, settings menu let me show you guys the end to the benchmark score which is about what you would expect it is about 150 uh, 149,000, which is on the lower side of the cm rom spectrum but no get rom most of the Nogat ROM does get about 154, uh, 150 to 154,000. This is on 149,000, which is still a respectable score, but not the highest end score which you get. But yes, the performance is at an advantage of increased stability and increased uh, battery life. I do get a very good battery life with this. Uh, maybe almost same as CM, but... Uh, well, standby battery life is much better on this one because CM for some reason right now doesn't have a very good uh, standby battery life. Let me show you guys the boot animation which is pretty amazing. Here is the boot animation for Tesla ROM and uh, that is a very intricate boot animation. It does have a lot of stages and uh, it's pretty cool. I really like that. A ground zero ROM. And yes, these are the developers, probably one of the best developers to come out for the OnePlus 3. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, let me just show you guys the camera performance. Again, camera is, I don't know why, but camera is right now at a standstill for most part. Um, not many stuff works. Uh, it isn't in any way comparable to Oxygen OS camera because, well, there is over sharpening and there is exposure, exposure problem many times. Uh, I use footage camera and that does tend to work better and uh, I do really like that. This is the o o o Oxygen OS camera V2 which is for NOGAD. Again, well, no auto HDR or anything of that sort. So you are limited in that regard. So yeah, you can see it is a really noisy photo. And uh, that's the main thing about the camera on these ROMs. In conclusion, well, the camera is not as good as Oxygen OS. Well, it has never been and uh, it's still not. So I guess that much is it about the ROM then. Um, I will happily use this rom as a daily driver if i need to i don't have any issues with it and i really do appreciate how much uh how stable this is it is more stable than any cm rom which i've used my daily driver resurrection remix it does crash uh not entirely crashes but it does stutter sometimes when i'm viewing videos in quick pick and i just well click back it hangs for a while and then goes to my gallery so there are certain issues with those ROMs which is overly feature rich ROMs but this one I didn't have any issues with that so I really appreciate that. So yeah I guess that much is it about this ROM then. Um, hope you guys like the video. Please share, subscribe and like the video if you found it useful. See you guys next time. Bye.